Good morning, Al. It may only be January the 7th, but this transfer window is already reaching fever pitch. That's because TalkSport understands that Barcelona have accepted a loan offer from Aston Villa for Felipe Coutinho. The deal to reunite Coutinho with his former Liverpool teammate Steven Gerrard set to be confirmed, we believe, this morning. Coutinho did have interest from across Europe, including other Premier League clubs, but it's his relationship with Gerard from their playing days that really has swayed him towards what is a sensational move to Villa Park. I know the Villa Chief Executive, Christian Perslow, has also played a significant role in negotiations with Barcelona. It's four years ago this week since Coutinho completed his £146 million move from Liverpool to Barca. And this story first broken on the TalkSport Edge, so well worth downloading for more breaking transfer news. But the big news this morning, Barcelona accepting a loan offer for Felipe Coutinho to return to the Premier League at Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. Alex, before you go, any other news coming out for the likes of Newcastle? What's happening up there? Yeah, this one has just been announced. We first reported it on Talk Sport in the middle of December. Kieran Trippier officially now is a Newcastle player. He's completed his move from Atletico Madrid. It's a two and a half year contract initially uh, with the option of a further year, we understand. £12 million up front. That fee will rise significantly with add ons, including if Trippier can help Newcastle stay in the Premier League. I tell you what, Al, that won't be the last bit of business that Newcastle will do between now and the end of the window. But Kieran Trippier, as of this morning, is a Newcastle player. Well, Good. Very what good, do you mate. make of that? Continue on loan now to Villa. I weren't sure. You know, he's not played a lot of football for the last couple of years. Um, you look at what he did when he was in the Premier League. He was a top player, wasn't he? He yeah. was a match winner. Um, had a lot of charisma on the pitch. And then he just seems to have gone really quiet. It's not quite worked out and panned out at Barcelona. A bit like Hazard? A little bit, yeah. But I think the, the reasons are different because when you hear about his personality, that's what my ears pricked up when I heard he was a painfully shy guy. And going to a place like Barcelona where you've got a lot of egos and all the rest of it, you can understand why he might have gone under. And also, I think with the pandemic, you know, he might have found that very difficult to deal with. He's not played a lot of football in the last couple of years. Steven's relationship with him has obviously uh, been a massive bonus to be able to get this, get this uh, deal over the line. I think this could be a massive deal. You know, you look at Aston Villa, you think Jack Grealish, he was a huge player, huge personality on the pitch. They've missed a little bit of that this season. I think he could be the perfect player to go in there, play that either number 10 or just that inside right or inside left position, get on the ball and create opportunities for the team. So, yeah, I think Steven Gerrard, I think that's what you get when you get Steven Gerrard. You yeah. get the history of Steven Gerrard and that's one of the players that he's played with. That's coming to Aston Villa. Great, great transfer. Great signing. Fantastic signing for Aston Villa's point of view. Because, you know, he was an £146 million player for years ago. says he's not played a lot of football. Well, he, 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 he was on loan, wasn't he, at Bayern Munich? Uh, and he, he was one in three in the league. Uh, I think he played 23 games, scored eight goals in the league for Bayern Munich. It's good. So yeah. he's that sort of player that opens doors up for Danny Ings, um, whoever's up front at the, at the time for, for Aston Villa. So I think it's a brilliant signing. And Steven Gerrard knows his personality. He knows exactly who, who he's signing because he's played with him. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's looking forward to, to playing under Steven Gerrard. So I think that's a fantastic signing for Villa. Trev, what about Newcastle then? Obviously, this is vital over the next few weeks. Yeah, huge. I think, that, like uh, Crookie just said there, I don't think this is going to be the last bit of business that Newcastle are doing or will do this, this uh, transfer window. I think it's a great signing, um, both for him the player and the club. You know you know the quality you're getting. He's just won La Liga with uh, Atletico. He's coming back confident. I had a big argument, well, not an argument, a debate with Simon Jordan on Wednesday. And, argument, and Simon, I heard an argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Simon was saying the only reason he's gone there is is the money. I think he's so London, London-centric, he doesn't really see what goes on above <laughs> the Watford gap. And you know, Al, you know, Ray, that football club, when it's flying, when the fans are behind them, when they've got a good team to put out on the pitch, there's probably not many better places to play football. It's so exciting. They're so fanatical. And I think there's a little bit of that in there. There's a bit of, you know, I, I've always thought there's a bit of jeopardy because where they are in the league, but there's a lot of glory to be gained as well. If you can keep that help keep Newcastle United in the Premier League and keep them up and build from there, 
I think there's a lot of glory there as well. So I understand, listen, he's going to get a big bag of money. We all know that. He'll get a big bag of money wherever he goes. He's a top player, you know, even if he went to Manchester United. But I think he's a blue, so I'm glad he didn't do that anyway. So we're saying, but, um, are we saying Simon's blinker? <coughs> he's just what past me. He's not. He's not. London centric. <laughs> you know, anything around Westminster, yeah, he's all over it. He thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread. Anything above the Watford gap, he's an absolute nightmare. What about uh, we hear? Um, I, I, how do you pronounce it? I always pronounce it Dinya, but it's um, the boy from Everton. It looks as if he's gone up and, and long staff going to Dinya, Dinya, yeah, whatever. Dinya. Um, I don't know. I can't can't defend. No, can't defend I'm, I'm not over. I'm, no. I, with the greatest respect, I'm not over keen on him. I think it depends where you want to play him. If you want to play him as a fullback, it's a no no for me because I've seen players in the cup competitions from lower divisions absolutely give him a horrendous time. You know, he can't defend one-on-one -on -one situations. He's quick. I think he's got a lot of quality going forward. He's almost like the, the opposite to uh, Wan-Bissaka. wan, -Bissaka. wan -Bissaka superb in one-on-one -on -one situations and he's just not good enough going forward. This boy is the exact opposite. I think you need some, somewhere in the middle. Um, so for me, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be overjoyed if West Ham signed him, but there's a lot of big clubs interested. What would you do? I'm glad you mentioned his name. What would you I'd do? I'd destroy with him. But what would you do with Juan Bissaka? Would you have him out there and saying, "I want you to take a yard, get a yard and cross, get a yard and cross." Yeah. I want to see him attack. Look, at the end of the day, is a fullback, is a wing, but I want to see him attack in advanced positions and hit that byline and whip mm. balls across. He don't do it. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ray knows because he's worked for one of the best coaches there is to work for, Arsene Wenger. It's not about what you're telling him to do. It's how you deliver that with a bit of empathy. Getting him on side, getting his confidence up, getting it to be a second nature thing. He, he, he can do that, but he complicates it. His head's all over the place. He might not have the support. I think he's one of them players that you need to put your arm around him get it build that relationship as a coach and once you get him there and get him repetition 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 i think it would come naturally that's but, all it is yeah it's, unfor it's unfortunate isn't it the way that he's, he, he's he's almost gone backwards at manchester united because of the expectancy that he has to bring down that right hand side going forward he's, he's failed on numerous occasions and he's almost gone within his cell which is it's, it's about doing a little bit extra at the end of training you know, get one of your strikers and say, "Why don't you stay behind and I'll put some balls in, and you you, you can uh, practice finishing as well, uh, and and just do it." As Trevor says, repetition. That's all you got to do. Not, I'm not saying he has to hit the byline every time because when you're training, you, know, you don't always mix do it up, that. Do you? Come inside your left foot yeah. and whip one in, and then go down the outside, whip one in with your right. You know, the more you do, the more you get it correct. Yeah. Yeah, and, and all you need is a little uh, one of the youth team guys to come over, try yeah. and be a little bit of a, a left back, and try and take him on and, and do little <coughs> things like that, you know. And that that you believe it or not, before you know it, it's a it's, it's a habit. You know, look at David Beckham. How do you think he got so so good at delivering the ball? It wasn't mm. pure luck. It was practice, you know. And strikers knew exactly what he's going to do with it. Yeah, half a yard. Van, Van Nistel will make his run across and, and you've got, you got half a yard on a defender then and you know the ball's going to be delivered and it's perfect for a striker. Yeah.